Hey guys, so day four is uh, upper body day. It's Thursday. Um, bench and row is the main theme of this workout. With the bench, I've never consistently benched in my life. Um, never, I've probably done two weeks in a row maybe and done like a five by five program for like two or three weeks before I felt niggles and I thought this isn't right for me. I'm not ready for this. It doesn't feel right. Um, but the goal of this one is to get up to 20% of your, 25% of your body weight in each hand. And I was, I did have some 20 kg dumbbells that I borrowed from Tris, which he's took back now. Um, so I, maximum I can get on these is about 16 kilos. But to be honest, I don't mind. And, and as um, Ben Patrick mentioned, you don't really want, if you, unless you wanna, if you go above that kind of goal of 25% per hand, at that point, then you're gonna build muscle in the upper body that's gonna take from your lower body athleticism potential. Like if you just wanna build a big upper body or you need that upper body strength, then go above that. I'm not chasing a size or a look or a strength, especially with the upper body, I wanna be strong on my legs. Um, so I'm happy to just hit these 16s for now. Uh, it's week six, uh, as I say, so most consistently I've ever benched, ever rode in my life. And my form feels like it's getting better every week. I do feel stronger every week. But what I've also done in to feel, to round it out a little bit more, and I understand Ben doesn't wanna make every session like 10 different movements. And that's what I really like about it. It's concise and precise. Um, but because I've got the time and other intentions like climbing and, and other strength, I've added in chin-ups and dips. So rather than doing four rounds, I'm gonna do three rounds with chin-ups and dips in. So that's two pushes with the press and the dip, and then two pulls with the row and the, the pull-ups at different angles, each one's at different angles, so I like that. And then we've got some mobility work to finish off with. So yeah, just gonna get on with the, the benching and the row and start now. So that's the end of the main workout, the strength work, I guess, and then the next bit is mobility. Um, but during that, um, Haley makes fun of me because my jaw's sticking out a lot. And uh, something I kind of learned from Work Method from uh, Alex Canellis, he does it so much, and they say, I think strong men, strong men use it because they're having to lift maximum weight. And apparently 30% of your core is in your neck, something like that, and using your jaw helps you to engage it. And it's a habit. I got into and you, it might look weird in the beginning or feel strange that you're doing it but eventually you do feel the extra strength that seems to engage when you do that so a little odd but yeah, that's why you see me doing that. Okay, so that's day four done. Um, ended up dropping one of the sets from the mobility work and just in each set I wouldn't follow a specific rep count. I was just trying to find a feeling of fatigue and activation in certain muscles, um, especially like I say, putting things through the lens of back chain dominant when I'm doing the hip openers and not trying to work against yourself. Splits is kind of, starts to feel like a more, well, it always feels kind of unnatural, but tuning into that more. So rather than hip openers than trying to force both open at the same time, working on one of them drawing open, using the glute and this kind of outer thigh area while not stressing the other leg and then swapping legs, pulling on that one as well. Um, doing some pigeon work and again, just driving into the ground with this piriformis as they call it. I think that's the name of the muscle. Um, in the, the QL, the side work, man, my QLs is one of my biggest things from years of um, just being stuck in my front chain, I guess, not using my body the way it was designed. The QLs had to tighten up this is something I want to do specific videos on, but literally tight fascia is like in bowling when they put bumpers up for children who can't get it in the straight line. Fascia is saying that you're not using your body in the lines it was biomechanically designed by the creator to function so it gets tight to protect your joints and, and not allow them to be at risk because otherwise you're going to crunch your bones and all sorts of problems will happen a lot quicker. Of course, it still creates problems down the line, but if you're stuck in one path of movement that's not the way it was designed, which most of us 
quite 99.99% of us are, we've got niggles and tight fascia. And so learning the correct way, mathematical, mathematically designed by, you know, to function with the spine in the correct, first of all, you know, once the spine's in the correct position, and this is something I actually kind of noticed with a bit of FP practice, it's like putting a key in a lock. And when your spine's in the correct position, it's like the, the, the bits on the lock, is there a name for them, on the key that stick down? You know, it has like nine, depends on the lock, right, or the key, but it can have like, it's got all these different shapes going down it, right? And you put the key in the lock and then turn it. If your spine isn't in the right position and you're using your body, then it's, you're fighting the lock, you're fighting the way it's meant to function. So getting this, the back chain dominant, as, as I say, as the lens, as the key in the lock, and then foot doing everything else from there, things are starting to click and make a lot more sense and start to feel a lot more activated. Um, so having that as a lens, with, so yeah, <laughs> there's a bit of a tangent from the QL. QL's been tight, so rather than like trying to force these raises and trying to up the weight, I'm just trying to feel the QL switch on. At what point of the side bend does the QL start to switch on? Don't just rush into positions. Um, and just find the activation, trying to keep the glutes engaged. That's the muscle that I've been missing, not activating. So I'm on the side bend, my glutes are engaged, find the QL switch on. Without the glute there, I actually feel a lot more at risk. So having the glute on is helping those side bends, helping my QL not, not get so fried. But yeah, that's it for day four. Thanks for tuning in. Next day, I'm actually going to Rainbow Gathering today, randomly. I've never been to one of them before. Um, so this is the first time in six weeks I'm not going to stick to the plan perfectly, but I should be back for Saturday, so I hope to do session five rather than Friday, do it on Saturday, which is VMO squats. Um, so we'll see how we get on with them. But yeah, thanks for tuning in. See you tomorrow. Hey there, everyone. So today is Saturday. Um, we're gonna do Friday's ATG dense workout today on Saturday, but it's all, to be truthful, it's exactly one week and one day since the rest of the week has been recorded. I've actually took a week off of training, I've been doing the go to recode stuff and I wanted to try it um, without overlapping with the ATG just to see how it felt. Um, and I started it a day early basically because I was pretty tired. And I think doing the, the dense program, it's quite intense. You are training like a full time athlete. And because I wanted to get to week four before I really started to up the weights, I think in the last few weeks I started to start to build towards the standards and in upping the weights, doing five workouts a week that have quite intense body workouts. Um, especially coming from, literally I didn't really train last year, anything like this, um, it has been quite intense. So I was pretty tired for the last week and I took a week off, just focused on the go to recode, which is kind of more baby positions, child rockers and stuff. Um, I had a lot of naps and just recovered. And I think there's something in the stars or the air right now I don't know what it is but everyone's feeling a bit tired right now anyway so took a week off um, just but well, I wanted to finish that workout uh, and then I'll talk about going forward after but yeah so this is the final workout from the ATG dense program this is Friday's workout just gonna warm up with currently my favorite warm-up is crawling with a band up and this just really gets me in the back chain with the glutes firing. Hey, so just finished the session. Today it started 
with uh, reverse up knee pain but as I've said before I've kind of replaced that at the moment uh, today I was doing just crawling instead just to try and get my back chain activated get the glutes activated um, I think it's such a nice simple task of returning to what we did with the children that we did before we were able to walk was crawl and it built all the strength and patterns into the body makes sense right um, but using the band so that it just there are a few cues, I won't go into it now, I want to do set, I'll do separate stuff on the crawling, but yeah, crawling to warm up, I went into uh, the triple tricep of calf raises, hamstring curls with the monkey foot and hip flexor, like leg pulls, knee raises, um, but instead of calf raises, again, my ankle's still working on them, I just did some gentle exploration around the angles, trying to strengthen my green dot, strengthen the outer edges of my green dot, I've obviously got quite a collapsed foot on the inside, um, you know, bad habits my whole life, bad biomechanics, um, trying to work on that. So I think strengthening, so if you see the green dot as the center of your foot and try and strengthen the angles around that, my outer edges have been very weak. So just kind of getting out over the outer edges of my green dots on that. Then as to, as to keep that weight super light, I think the goal is to get up to at least kind of 10 kilos. I'm doing three kilos at the moment because it, it is, there is a, a great tool, the monkey foot. If you're putting in a heavy weight and just janking it around, you could do a lot of damage to your knee and hips and all, and all sorts of supportive muscles if, if you're not really strong and stable in those positions to begin with. So I'm happy to stay at three kilos doing hamstring curls, but I'm kind of thinking back chain with it. So I'm not like rounding forward. I'm trying to um, kind of pull back and down with my side and pull the leg up rather than, yeah, like a, a rounded spine like that and pulling the leg up. I'm just trying to think more crawling patterns when I'm doing it. And then the same with the with the hip flexor lifts. I tense the glute at the bottom. I find something something that I've practiced. I've seen Charles Poliquin talk about it once. And it was someone was doing bicep curls. And he's talked about tensing your triceps at the bottom before you pull. And you get more engagement or something. And so I try and think about that in often a lot of the movements. So what I think about the, what do they call it, the, the opposite muscle in the interaction so the glute being the opposite kind of the hip flexor so at the bottom before I do the hip flexor lift I tense the glute that helps the hip flexor relax and then I pull on the hip flexor um, and instead of doing three sets I just did two sets and then I went on to the VMO squats um, this is one of the best feeling moves again apply, trying to apply kind of go to principles I use some kind of side slants so that put me on the outside edge driving back into the glute and opening the hip, opening the knees by using the hips to open the knees, not just sticking the knees out wide, but pulling back the hips into the back of the hip capsules to go down and trying to stay upright, trying to keep the back chain long and kind of curved that way. Um, but again, I didn't, I only did half the sets on the VMO squats. Um, so that's what I wanted to talk about really is as I come to end this video is as I started to up the weight and I've not really took a break. I've not trained like this in years since I kind of did CrossFit probably was the last time, but then my body was breaking down from that. Um, it's intense. It's, I, think, I think this program, if you're a full-time athlete and you can do this program, I think you will make incredible progress. And Or if you can just do this program in any way and you, you just priority is strengthen the body and you're intuitive enough to listen to your body to not um, get it injured to, to you're humble enough to choose the right weights for where you're at I think you can this program is an absolute uh, masterpiece and so that's what I'm always having to do is always having to check myself and because of how tired I felt last week and I took the week off um, I think that's important I, you know to do six weeks of the program of the 12-week program and then take a week off I think that was much needed, especially if I wanted to start ramping the weight up. But what I'm going to do, because I do want to implement the GOTA, and what I what was really interesting in the week off is I still did the GOTA recode stuff um, while I took a week off from ATG to see if I would make faster progress with that, taking out the ATG, and to, you know I was a bit tired. What I noticed, and I don't, I can't say anything for certain. This is still just my own empirical observation and experience. There's always so many factors in life going off. When I started my recode and was doing ATG at the same time, the go to recode, I noticed space opening up in my body that uh, was quite profound and was heading in the direction I've been chasing for ages, right? 
since taking the week off and just doing the recode, the space hasn't been there the same way and it's not, it's not coming the same way it was coming while I was doing ATG. So that makes me think that doing the ATG alongside the recode with the go to principles was beneficial for speeding up the recode. Now I don't know that, um, but so what I want to do is rather than going forward, let's get to that conversation. As someone who's done 18 weeks of ATG, has done a few weeks of GOTA, going forward, what I'm going to do is, because I still want to do the ATG program, I still think it's an incredible piece of programming, I'm going to look into do it something like this every other day. So the five days of programming, rather than do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I do Monday, I move Tuesday to Wednesday, move Wednesday to Friday, and then move Thursday to Monday the next week, and then move Friday to Wednesday the next week, and then Friday becomes the Monday, if that makes sense. So it kind of becomes a 10 day, 10, 11 day program, rather than five days on, two days off, five days on, two days off. So I get a day off in between. Now I might modify that. I did like doing the upper body Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I might just keep the upper body Tuesdays and Thursdays, take the Wednesdays off, move Wednesday to Friday, you know, some other variation of that, but I just want to do it where I get more break in between days, so I can have days off um, because it's, it is a, feels like a full-time job uh, keeping up with the program um, for recovery, for, for the day. I don't have as much energy for, to go about the day. So if I had a day off in between, I could recover. I could maybe progress each workout. I, from learning things from um, Dr. Doug McGuff and you look into how much gain, when you lose gains and stuff like that. I feel comfortable doing 10 days, 10 to 14 days between sessions if I get the right activation in those sessions. And that's what the thing, I, I think I do get the right activation in the sessions and that's what might be making me almost overtrain sometimes um, because I am able to find what I'm meant to be feeling but then it burns out my nervous system. I want to give a huge shout out to Ben. Ben actually sent me, a I bought a monkey foot and then he sent me a monkey foot as a gift. He sent me this slant board, I bought a slant board and he sent me a slant board as a gift. What I, I love about the ethics of Ben doesn't, get any money from affiliates um, but I think what he does do is he tells the companies that he uses let me just get a few of your products to some people uh, rather than give me money and I think that's flipping awesome because he gets good good equipment out if you are interested in the equipment um, I've used here I'll leave a link below because it would be a link to Ben's page but Ben has created an equipment list for the dense program and that's got the, the some sort of Nordic setup um, slant board, monkey foot, the, all the equipment you need for the program, which is, you know, it's quite a bit of equipment, but you might be able to get it, just buy a few pieces like this and then go to your, take it to your gym and find the rest at your gym. Um, but that, I'm really grateful to Ben for sending me the equipment for absolutely nothing, just said, sending you something to help you with the next program, um, which is really nice of him. Um, but yeah, so what I want to do going forward, split the dance program over two, one and a half weeks, two weeks, Keep doing the ATG, keep doing the the go to recode, and start to document that progress. Um, so, and I, and what I want to do is kind of tune into my body more because with the Doug McGuff uh, body by science approach, they just do one set of everything to failure and make progress, and you do the reps slower. And I think there's there's some place there's value in that. Like I wonder if I did the VMO squats one round to failure and then you can start to bring in accommodating resistance so maybe I start with a heavy weight and Haley makes helps me swap the weight when I get too tired for that weight I swap to a lighter weight then swap to a lighter weight then I go no weight just body weight and then by the end of it she's helping to lift me up there's a guy mindful mover on Instagram who I follow who does accommodating resistance like that with his girlfriend so at the start she'll be like weighing on him and by the end she's lifting him up and I just think there's some beautiful way to blend all of those philosophies so that you could train less but with more intensity and real, really precise on the body parts that you're targeting. Um, but there's just, I don't know, it's kind of a brain fuck right now. There's just so much um, to bring in. And I just love, with Gota, I'm literally just on my knees like a baby, bouncing up and down, doing rockers, watching sport for two hours, um, and just exploring seating positions. And it's simple and there's no equipment. So that's kind of been a fresh a breath of fresh air like that, but I do want to see if I can help speed it up for my own enjoyment and then to help others understand that as well. So I wonder how the, if the HG can help speed that up. Um, especially with the squat stuff, with someone who's, who's built quite a lot of muscle around mid-range positions and that's what the ATG is about building strength in the end range positions 
you, someone like me or some other athlete needs a bit of weight rather than just body weight to get into those positions. So I do feel like with the VMO squats, that's gonna help me get to a squat quicker than if I just do like 50 air squats like that when I don't really get the same tension as I can when I'm holding a bit of weight. Um, but yeah, I am noticing big improvements. I would recommend the dense, dense program for anyone that's into strength training or is an athlete that wants to be, be more athletic. Um, and I'd also at the moment, off of a few weeks, would recommend GOTA, but I, I can't say it as uh, experienced as I am with the ATG. So going forward, I continue to document the journey, as I say. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for more content. Um, I really do think, big picture, long game, there is just some program to take to old people, to, to like local village halls, to... Uh, eight to 10 year old children that is a blend of um, goater, knees over toes and the rope to help posture. There's, there's just some one hour pro class that could be put together and maybe that's my job to do that, to help these people at those ends of the spectrum. But I've, I'm at the moment exploring for the athletes as well. Uh, but yeah, trying to put all my thoughts into one concise video and it's not happening, but thank you for following either way anyway. God bless you all. Godspeed. Peace out, guys.